Good morning, Shalom, Bokir Tov. I think that's Cindy, who I know. Hi. Um, do, 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 do. Listen. How are you? Oh, I'm fine. How are you doing? <laughs> I didn't realize I was on and I was trying to find the unmute button. It's so good to see you. Oh, great to see you. I can't. I think we saw each other at a concert. Well, I first met you years ago at Mount Perrin when you were teaching. Oh, the yes. Yes. And Richard and Carolyn Hyde were visiting that day and we took them to lunch. Do you remember that? I sure do. And then you came, the next time I saw you, I think, was when you came to Beth Adonai. Beth and I, right. That was the yeah. last time I saw you. Yes, yes. Yeah. You doing okay? Yeah, one day at a time. There's Lynn. Hi, and Lynn. The Lord is good um, amidst it all. Um, you know, we know to trust in him. And, yes. Um, I'm playing Joel. Well, it's really Lamb by the Rivers of Babylon from 1995. You know, you think that's such a long time, but uh, it's just such a beautiful song. And, it is. Uh, um, I see a, a person named Barb or Barb A and Lynn and Cindy, and we'll give it a few more minutes. <coughs> um, we put the notice out on Sar Shalom. Um, uh, Messianic Congregation as well as Facebook. So, uh, Lynn, I want to ask permission. Do you mind if I connect this to Facebook? If you don't want me to, I won't. No, it's fine. It's fine. Okay, good. Good. And uh, I think that's Cheryl. This is exciting to see these people <laughs> I haven't seen for a while. And Hi, Cheryl. This is Cindy. Uh Hey, how are you doing? Fine. I don't like to show my picture, so uh, <laughs> I'm just a black square, but I'm here. <laughs> so, I'm good. Glad to have you. Yes, I've been looking forward to this. Yes, yes. Um, uh, I was just sharing that I've been praying, uh, uh, playing. Um, uh, Joel Chernoff, it's really Lamb's music on By the Rivers of Babylon from 1995. And so it's just such a beautiful song. It's interesting how a song that was so long ago can be timeless today. And I'm just really grateful to Lynn, who's allowed me to um, be here. And I don't think I'm sharing my screen yet, which is good. And um, so. And let me get rid of this. And uh, good. Well, Lynn, it's good to see you. And you've been traveling a lot. And, uh, you know, how's the family? They're all good. They're all good. And um, we had a big reunion. Uh, we had 100 RSVP, 79 showed up. So it was a good turnout. Wow. That's yeah. Excellent. Yeah. That's excellent. That really is. I've just, no, I've just turned the music off so we won't be distracted. But um, I didn't know, if, Lynn, if you wanted to speak at the beginning. I'm going to talk about Tishba Av, um, historical stuff, and then also something pivot to the New Testament. And then if you'd like, me to share about social in Israel. That's great. And so, um, that well, that, yeah, that was primary to share with about social in Israel and the outreach and the different organizations. Great. Great. Um, yeah. 
Okay, good, good. Um, I just thought I'd give just a little thing since today is Tishba. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And um, so good. Well, it's 10 o'clock and I am always prompt. And so if you want to start and. Uh, yeah, I can open with prayer. Okay, good. And introduce and because uh, I don't know who else might be viewing so that they'll know this is Beth Adonai as well. It's just okay. Because I saw Cindy, I think it was three years ago when we were there and Cheryl too. And so it's just great to be connected. Thank you, Lynn. I can't believe it's been three years. <laughs> well, we're Beth Adonai Sisterhood is very grateful to have you here today um, to talk about what I've been telling them about for so long, but they'll, they'll hear it directly from you. So Father God, we pray that you anoint uh, this time and anoint Barry and give us ears to hear and eyes to see the work that you are doing here and for Israel and in Israel. We are anxious to bless your people in Israel. And uh, we also honor this day, a sad day. And we always look to you from whence cometh our help. And we, we glorify and magnify you in Yeshua's name. Amen. 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 Um, hold on a second. My husband just said something about the link. Um, I think it was a text. Okay, let me, let me get him the link. And uh, um, sorry about this. Oh, you get to see him, maybe. Um, hi, honey, I'll email it to you. You did, and I'm working. Oh, try to, try to Facebook. I, I put the link on my page on Facebook. Okay, I'll go okay bye. Um, okay, you know, Tishba Av, um, I'm going to get into that, but this morning, <clears throat> and I knew I was going to talk about this subject, and I've taught on it because I used to teach at Mount Perrin, Church of God, where I first, I think that's where I first saw Cindy. And um, uh, I woke up this morning. And I just it. for a second, Barry. Can I enter? Sure. Uh, Debbie, Debbie can't get in. There's a gal that can't get in. Okay, let me. Um, for some reason, it's. Uh, I don't know why. Oh, hold on. I'm sorry. Here, everyone's trying to get in, and I didn't have this. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, good. Okay. And I'm going to leave oh. this here and kind of be looking here too. Let me keep going here. I forgot. I have to let people in the room and Hi. do it like that. Shalom. Shalom. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes. Oh, hi, Lynn. Happy birthday. Thank you. Is it your birthday, Lynn? Well, happy birthday, Lynn. Well, happy. happy birthday to you at the end. Okay, I'm going to mute this, and if you have any comments, just uh, I'm going to open it up at the end, and, and it won't be loud, but um, so hang tight, and I'm going to keep it on this screen. Okay, and I have to keep looking at the screen so that people who come in can come in, but, um, you know, I woke up this morning, and I don't know if some of you have heard, and here comes Jeff, uh, Jeff's calling in from England. If any of you are familiar with Joel Rosenberg, he has a great uh, work. He's an author. He um, uh, goes back and forth between America and Israel. And he goes in and out of uh, Saudi Arabia and places like this. Well, anyway, he's in America. I was supposed to speak at a gathering uh, I think this past weekend, and he has COVID and he has been vaccinated. And so 
now we have this whole new thing with Israel about what's going to go on. And uh, when I woke up this morning and I didn't even know that, or maybe I knew that element. And then I read Psalm 137 verse one, by the rivers of Babylon. Uh, you know, we hung our willows and how can our captors ask us to sing a song when we're in captivity? And those of us who really love Israel, plan to go to Israel, long to maybe won't see it till the new Jerusalem, we long to see um, Jerusalem. And the thing is that is so special about Jerusalem is that is where it's the navel of the world. Uh, Ezekiel 5, 5 says that God said that he has placed the uh, Israel, the center of the nations. Now, most of the world doesn't even get that, but we who are believers know that. And so here we are thinking, okay, I've got a meeting um, for uh, our Israel group at uh, just a couple hours after this one today. And we've been having conference calls like every other week, every couple weeks, because it's so volatile right now. And if Joel, who got sick in America, who was vaccinated, uh, none of us are exempt whether we're vaccinated or not. And I know several people um, lately who have even been in the hospital I mean, lately within the past couple of weeks, and these are fairly young people, maybe in their 40s and 30s. And so there is cause concern that everything's going to start again. But I say all that to say that Tisha B'Av, what, what does this mean? Tisha, okay. Well, there is what, you know, I love to uh, uh, look at this calendar. This is the biblical calendar. Yes, it shows that it's July up here, but um, it says from Tammuz and Av. And today, which is, I want to make sure, July 18th, it is Tisha, because this month is Tisha, which is the ninth month for the biblical calendar. Um, and it's also, I'm sorry, it's, it's not, uh, Av is not nine, it's the seventh month. I'm sorry, it's the fifth month, and it's the ninth, Tesha. Tesha in Hebrew is nine. So, uh, and we have, we've got Av, Elul, which leads us into the, um, the uh, sacred holidays, uh, the biblical holidays, such as, um, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, and then Sukkot. And we have these calendars for 2022. And I'll talk about that afterwards. But I really like this calendar. Uh, it gives the Shabbat readings. But I do not go to Israel during certain times of the year. And God is all about the Moedim, uh, the appointed times. They are his appointed times now. There's a word in Greek called kairos, which is a real special word about time. Like you have time when you when Yeshua came into your heart. That was a kairos time for me, and I'm sure it probably was for you. But And there's chronos, chronological time in Greek. But moedim are God's appointed times. And that's what these... Um, as we come up into Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur and Feast of Tabernacles, Sukkot. So I never go to Israel until after Sukkot, okay? We never go there. And one of the reasons uh, that I'm very, I, this is a guide for me, a spiritual guide for me, is because of what we're just leaving, which is called the dire straits. Have any of you just raise your hand or whatever heard about the dire straits? It's well, I have. It's and I'll I'll share with that. When I first learned about it, I would go through some of these uh, challenging times, um, spiritually dark times, around this time, and even into like uh, Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. Um, just that really. Um, deepened my walk with the Lord, but it really made me to lean on God more. 
And these dire straits are three weeks that lead up to Tish B'Av. And then onward, we go into the month of Elul, which is a month of reflection. And then also um, the month of Tishri, which is where we see Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Sukkot. Are y'all following me? Okay, good. I don't want, I talk fast. I just like to say buckle your pew belt because I like to talk fast. So, um, but I, this is like teaching. So here we are at Tish B'Av, the ninth of Av. And I get a message that the, you know, that somebody that's in and out of Israel that really has so much latitude, he's sick with COVID and he's really sick and he's in America. And does this mean that, you know, uh, we're not going to go uh, at the end of September? I don't know. This is in God's hands and not, not mine. But I wanted to just let me make sure that I can share my screen. Uh, I just I'm not going to read it all because I really want to be mindful of our time. Um, I don't know. I'm going to have to keep coming in and out of here from time to time, but I'm just going to read uh, the first few verses here of Lamentations 1, and it's entitled, the superscription is, The Song of Jerusalem's Groaning, and How Lonely Sits the City, Once So Full of People. And the reason why this is read where it is sorrowful is because um, it is said that in 587 BC, the first temple was destroyed in 70 AD. On this date, the 9th of Av, the second temple was destroyed. The Bar Kokhba rebellion began in 134 AD. That happened on this date. Um, it is even said back in Numbers that God forbid the children of Israel of entering um, the promised land back on this date. And so there's quite a bit of history. So uh, if you take the time and you read through Lamentations, I'm just going to read through a few here. You'll see the sorrow about um, seeing the city of Jerusalem destroyed. I don't know what would, would feel like if that happened. It even frightens us to hear about the bombs that are going into Jerusalem. So it starts out how lonely sits the city one so full of people. And Jeremiah, uh, the weeping prophet, penned this. She who was once great among the nations has become like a widow. The princess among the provinces has become a forced laborer. Bitterly she weeps at night. Her tears are on her cheeks. Among all her lovers, there is no one to comfort her. All her friends have betrayed her. They have become her enemies. Judah has gone into exile. Under affliction and great servitude, she dwells among the nations. She finds no resting place. All her pursuers have overtaken her in the midst of her distress. The roads to Zion mourn for no one comes to her. Moedim, uh, the, uh, the um, appointed times. All her gates are desolate. Her priests, her kohanim groan, her maidens grieve. She is in bitter anguish. Her foes have become her masters. Her enemies are at ease for Adonai has afflicted her. And that's why I'm looking at. That's what I'm really going to focus on. Uh, because of her many transgressions. And so, and you can read Lamentations. It's short. It's quick. Um, but you'll see why uh, this is a day of mourning in Jerusalem. Uh, and is and it in is and in Israel, as well as in different congregations around the world because of this great day of sorrow. And they remember what happened to beloved Jerusalem. And we see all through Psalms, you know, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord, that Jerusalem is a city set on a hill. This is a city of a great king. This is Jerusalem. Uh, let me say, Paris is nice, London is nice, the Grand Canyon is awesome, but nothing, it all pales in the comparison to Jerusalem regarding this spiritual, uh, uh, just the pull of Jerusalem. And so um, it's also interesting that in 1492, and um, we know it because that was when Columbus sailed, but that was also the expulsion of the 
Jewish people from Spain by Isabella. And then we've got the Inquisition. Uh, but what's interesting how God works is he took that Inquisition, the expulsion of the Jews. The Jews went up through um, the Caribbean. They came to South America. They came some to Cuba. Um, uh, and uh, so that's why we see when you go to even Jamaica and um, you'll see, I mean, I've got a friend and he was at Mount Perrin. He and his wife went to Israel with me in 06. And uh, he's telling us, you would not believe all these graveyards and synagogues. And, um, you know, there's, you know, black and white, there's God's picture, his Heinz 57 there in Jamaica. But it's kind of like, you know, oi, man, you know, it's really a beautiful blend. And so these folks from Spain gravitated and there's teachings. Jeff uh, Seif, my husband, has done several there's some books called Who Put the Oi in Ahoy. I'm not going to spend a, a lot of time, but God took 1492 and made it good. And so if you meet a lot of Spanish people, um, uh, the last name might be um, uh, Jimenez or Ramirez, EZ, the ending on their name. They would put EZ on the ending of their name to signify Eretz Zion, the land of Zion to signify that they were a private, that they were a secret Jew. It's called crypto Jews. That's a whole other story. But I want you to know how God took something and then made it beautiful. So, um, and then also in 1942, uh, there a lot of the Jews from the Warsaw ghetto were sent to Treblinka where they died in the Holocaust. Now, it's kind of interesting, some of the um, traditions, like it is said, you're not supposed to cut your hair in the dire straits in those three weeks. Uh, the Orthodox or those who are a little bit more religious, they will fast from food and drink. Um, they will not shave. It's almost like in a funeral. Uh, when uh, my grandmother died, my father's mom, Orthodox family, uh, we sat close to the ground. The mirrors were covered. My dad didn't shave. Uh, he took his uh, shoes off to signify he wanted, you know, for comfort. Um, people would come to him. The mirrors were covered. There's no marital relations. There's things like that on this date. So it's a time of sorrow, grieving, and lament for Jerusalem. And they'll read Lamentations and Job. And you, you verify all this. You don't have to uh, trust me on it, but it's just, you know, um, uh, check out what I have to say. But they do not eat until sundown tonight. And so um, these are some of the things that go on for this holiday. I never... I knew about this. Um, I would get Tisha B'Av and Tu Bishvat mixed up. Uh, tu Bishvat is in February usually, and it's the holiday of the trees at the beginning of spring when you'll go out and you plant a tree. And Shabbat uh, is also a Hebrew month, but this is um, uh, to, um, Tisha 9 B'Av, 9 of Av. And so just doing some research because we're in challenging, confusing times. And just this week, I thought, okay, what are we, what are we looking at? Um, and what made me think of all this is that I'm going to share my screen again. Um, hopefully I've got it here. Okay. Can you see my screen? I Okay, shake your head, nod your head. Hopefully you can see the screen. Okay, good. Thank you. Well, let's see who was that. Okay, good. Thank you. I started thinking about 1918 and 1917 because my parents on my dad's side escaped Bolshevik revolution, Bolshevik Russia uh, down a log on the Volga River. It's probably not unlike what's going on with the um, uh 
uh, the illegal aliens, I even hate to call them illegal aliens, but the, um, the mass exodus of the people from Mexico into the States. And anyway, my, my grandparents escaped Bolshevik revolution. And so I started thinking, wasn't that around the same time as the Spanish flu? And yes, but not only that, I started looking at all the wars and the uprisings back then, and I'm, I won't spend very much time on it, but 1918 was when the Spanish flu began. And when I looked at all the country, United Kingdom, France, um, the uh, Poland, Estonia, Lithuania, Riyadh, French Indo Indochina, Russia, Turkish, I started looking at all the wars just in that time. Not only were they dealing with the Spanish flu, the influenza, they're dealing with these uh, wars. And it just reminded me, because I was thinking of Cuba and I was thinking of South Africa and India, what's going on, it's crazy right now. And yet, and Germany, the floods, and yet was it anything different than back then? And then I went and I looked at the today, 2021 ongoing conflict in the world. 78 Afghanistan, and this is with 10,000 or more deaths, and uh, 06 North America, Asia 2011, they didn't even put 1948, uh, anything in the Middle East, uh, but you can see down here, um, 1,000 to 9,900 who died, all these different country, Africa, Asia, um, Boko, Boko Haram, which we now have, and it's just a nightmare. Um, and then 199 dead, uh, Pakistan, Gaza Strip, Palestinian uh, conflict, Palestinian territory conflict, Darfur. So the reason why I wanted to see this is because I wanted to see, because sometimes we, uh, well, we live in a land of hyperbole right now. Oh, these are the worst times. And even Dickens said, these are the best of times and the worst of times. But we're, are these really the worst times? Well, as I look, and I don't even recommend Wikipedia as a valid source to my students. And I didn't take the time to check all of the references. But I do say that Wikipedia is a good place to start if you're looking for some information. And so you can look at um, uh, Wikipedia later on. Um, but anyway, I just started thinking, these are the worst of times for those of us who have been born in the 50s, early 50s, because um, we see all of the wars. Um, even though we've had other wars, we haven't had the outbreak of, the, of COVID that we have now. And so, um, but the good news is, is that God is active and he is active in our lives. And um, we, our loyalty is to Yeshua. He's the one who reigns. Uh, God is on the throne. And so um, I just wanted to share, and I love these verses um, from Colossians uh, chapter one, verse nine through 12. And I'm just going to go through it because Paul gives us an action. Uh, he gives us an action plan for um, what we can do in it for to be thankful for spiritual attainments. And that's really what counts because the spiritual, the vertical, that which we get from the Lord helps us in the horizontal. So in, chapter, in verse nine, and it says, for this reason also, since the day we heard of it, we have to hear, we have not ceased to pray for you. So there's like hearing, there's praying and ask, we ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding. And so I love that when with our brothers and our sisters here on this call, um, since the day we've heard about y'all, since Beth Ad and I, I was there at the very beginning, the birth 
of Beth Adonai and um, the Torah that's got uh, Natalie Sekolo in dedication. Um, some of us contributed to that, so my roots go way back. And so since the day I heard of y'all now and you're flourishing, I haven't ceased to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with all spiritual wisdom and understanding. That's a great action right there. And then 10, here's more action that we should do so that you may walk in a manner worthy. And that's what we want to do. Believers did in the 1918 Spanish flu. I saw a picture of all these folks out on the street. I think they were in New York City, ladies in their nice outfits, but they're very, you know, very prim and proper, like Puritan looking or something. But they had their masks on. They had the hats and then they had the masks on. They were having worship outside. So even though they had to deal with the Spanish flu back then, which took millions, um, they still honored God. And so that is what we want to do too, so that you may walk in a manner worthy of the Lord. We do want to walk worthy to please him in every good work. We want to please him. You know, and it says without holiness, no one will see the Lord. And so none of us are going to get, um, 100% holy, but no, we want to strive. Um, I can even be convicted when I think of in thought, word, and deed, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, oh God. Is the meditation of my heart always acceptable? Absolutely not. <laughs> but I'm glad we got the Lord to help us. And uh, um, there used to be a button a long time ago, please be patient. God didn't finish with me yet. And so I can sign up for that club. Uh, we fit in right real well there uh, that we will um, please him in all respects, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. And I really want to give a shout out to Lynn. She is one of the most fruitful. She is like farmer Lynn. Okay. She plants this. Well, she checks out the soil. She plants the seeds she checks the rainfall, she uh, harvests, she gets people to help her in the field, and then she helps with the harvest. I mean, she is like farmer land. She, I don't even know in literature who would have been like the greatest farmer, but Lynn is amazing, bearing fruit in every good work. I'm sure everybody on this call is, and Lynn, I've just known for a long time, and she is so fruitful and increasing in the knowledge of God. And uh, to me, you know, Bible scripture memory is one of the helps that help me now. Sometimes I can't go to sleep and I'll recite Psalm 23. And if you have problems, even scripture memory, Ted Pierce did Psalm 23. Keith Green did Psalm 23. It's a great way to learn scripture just by learning some of the songs that are about scripture. Karen Davis out of Kahila Har Carmel has got um, our father in Matthew, uh, in Hebrew and in English. So um, I think these are good uh, sleeping pills, scripture, scripture memory, increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all power. Well, it's all power from above. Um, because as we get older, I don't have the power that I had in my forties. I just physical power, but we're talking about spiritual power here. And, you know, the Bible is the only book. It's like the bank. It's only good when it's open and we like it that the bank is open when we need to use it. And the author is always present with us. Only book in the world where the author is present and as we read it. And so, um, so we want to learn according to his glorious might for the attaining of all steadfastness and patience. Um, you know, I wish we all had, could take a patience pill, but then if you ask for patience, God's going to put you in a situation to wait. Why is it at the doctor's office that it's not P-A-T-I-E-N-C-E, it's P-A-T-I-E-N-T that we're a patient, we have to be patient there as a patient in the waiting room at the doctor. I mean, that is a hard place. And yet all of us at this moment are in God's waiting room 
Uh, he's Adonai Rofecha, the Lord who heals you. He heals body, soul, and spirit. And so uh, we want, we're attaining that word in Greek. It's not that we have attained or we will attain. It's an ongoing present tense that we are attaining. And when we get to heaven, we will see him face to face, but we will always be in that process of attaining of steadfastness and patience. Um, and then joyously giving thanks. Uh, I want to be someone that is, you know, joyously giving thanks uh, to God. Um, we, when Jeff and I got married almost six years ago, I had two cats and I never had a list with God. Uh, Dana, one of my good friends said, well, Barry, you know, uh, love you, love your cats. Now that was on her list, but it wasn't on mine. So Jeff graciously, although he had taken care of two dogs, he graciously became step cat daddy to Yofi, which is beautiful, Yofi in Hebrew, and Hosanna, because she was born on Palm Sunday. And then they both died and we buried him in the backyard and we got Holly. So he's now a cat daddy uh, and Hodu, which is our main coon, who's 23 pounds today. And Holly is eight. And Holly has a Hebrew name because when I found out we were going to get her, I was in Israel and I asked her driver, how do you say tuxedo in Hebrew? And it's Chalafat Erev. And so Holly is her American name, but she has a Hebrew name. And then Hodu, Jeff named her, which is so cool. He really is definitely a cat daddy because he thought at the name Hodu, which is give thanks. And with the U ending on Hodu, because Hod is like Toda, Hod, Hodu is let us give thanks, all of us, corporately. And so here, Paul exhorts us to joyously give thanks, Simcha, our best Simcha, very much joy give thanks, uh, giving thanks to the father who has qualified. Wow. Qualified. Um, I could speak a whole time on that uh, to get qualified. I know that, okay, Jeff right now, uh, and I don't even know, I don't see him on here, which is good because he'd be a, a good distraction to me, but he is in England right now, studying at Cambridge University. My husband's 65 years young, almost 66. He has gone through school uh, during COVID. Uh, and because he's in law enforcement criminology, the program is considered essential at Cambridge. And so he's been able to go back and forth. Sometimes there's like 20% or less of the people on the plane. He's been very diligent to get the COVID test. At the last trip, he went just a few months ago in April, April, he had either seven or eight COVID tests from start to finish to get into the country and then get back to America. And right now, somebody that he knows that he came in contact with has COVID. So he's quarantined. I don't think any of the other students he's in the program with, and these are like Scotland Yard people, higher up people. I don't think any of them got COVID, but Jeff did, but he's there diligently studying, diligently researching, preparing for his thesis. Although he's got two PhDs, he's going for a master's. He started way down because he wanted to uh, be qualified in this field. And I always like to say education changes the direction of your life. That is my um, phrase because I teach online. But you know what? This is the best. And God knows what you do in secret, studying and spending time with him. He qualifies us and he qualifies us to share in the inheritance. You know, um, one day we're all going to be airborne, A-I-R. We're going to be in the air to meet the Lord someday. But I like that term air, H-E-I-R. We're going to be, we are airborne now. We are heirs to our father and the riches of glory that he has. And so it says here, we're going to be qualified to share in the, in the inheritance of the saints of light. And that's what we are of light. Um, Yeshua tells us, and he said that he's the light of the world, the or ha'alom. And then he calls us to be 
the light, orim ha'alam, the lights of the world. That when, because light, no matter what, when you go out into darkness, the light dispels the darkness. And so when we see darkness, and I can be dark in my soul, I can be dark in my spirit, I can be downcast. And yet that Psalm says, why are you so cast down on my soul? Put your trust in God. And, and that's, this is like the best course correction. I know when Jeff's here, he doesn't do it all the time, but we uh, read in the Psalms, we'll read a proverb and something in the New Testament, because I need a course correction. Even when I get up, uh, grumpiness can set in. I can be grumpy cat, but I know if I can just get a word, a verse, a Psalm, whatever, just for the Lord to reset me vertically, it really helps uh, horizontally. So I take this back and it's always good to look up, you know, to keep looking up. Um, one of my favorite phrases is to be continued because we're all going to see each other again in the flesh. Maybe one of these days, Jeff and I'll be back at Beth Adonai or we'll be in Israel. But I like that to be continued because in Yeshua and the Lord, it's all to be continued uh, and it's going to be glorious. Uh, I started thinking about heaven and what will heaven be like and uh, part of that is it's just a couple days ago, uh, there were two Zooms on Thursday. Um, one was a gentleman that we knew in his 70s who got COVID, passed away, and he really went quickly once he got it. And then um, another woman who just had a stroke, she was in her 80s and went on to glory. And so I think about what's it going to be like and who's going to be there and what uh, teaching will I go for, you know, after I see Jesus and Paul and the father and everybody else, you know, I don't know about you, you probably thought about it, but, you know, until that day comes, uh, we get to be busy about the father's business. And um, Lynn knows it because she's been with me. And uh, I think Veronica's on the call. She's been, Jeff and I have been a few times together when we've served in Israel. It's not a tour. Jeff said, uh, tours take you where Yeshua walked yesterday, but uh, Social in Israel takes you to where Yeshua walks today. And so we have opportunities to go in hospitals, give stuffed animals, little lap quilts, things like that. We connect with everybody from the unborn with pro-life ministry to drug addicts, um, prostitutes, homeless in Tel Aviv. There's a uh, Russian mafia that... It'll just tear your heart up to just see um, the sad state of those people. But we can still give a good word and encouragement and go all the way up to the Holocaust, the elderly outside of Tel Aviv. And so um, it's it's an honor to, to, uh, to go there and serve. But right now, it's kind of like God is putting the brake on. Uh, I refuse to quarantine like other people won't get the vaccinations. And do we even know the effectiveness of the vaccinations? I do believe they'll keep you healthier, but I don't know. That's a thing that's in the heart. It's none of my business what other people do. I wouldn't ask anybody, you know, show, show me your colonoscopy <laughs> results. And so, you know, I don't care about the vaccination, but I got it so I could get in and out of Israel. And now uh, I have a great big question mark because of what Joel Rosenberg uh, reported today. So uh, I am going to close in prayer here. And then I see there's chat things, but also I'm going to just take the mic off for people. Um, I'm going to unmute everybody. Um, so Abba Father, we come and well, Lord, you're just so lofty. You're just so lofty and you're infinite. And we're so grateful for your infiniteness which allows us to believe that the best is yet to come. We know that the best is yet to come, not only here on earth, but in, uh, in times to come and in heaven. So Father, help us to be about your business. Thank you for allowing us to learn about Tisha B'Av. But Lord, we thank you that your calendar doesn't end on this sad date. It goes on and in you, it truly is the best is yet to come. So we thank you, Lord, bless every person on this call for your glory. And Lord, help them to just continue to persevere. Me too, 
to attain and to be qualified for that inheritance of the saints of light, for your glory and our fun and blessing. Keep us healthy, Lord, uh, body, soul, and spirit, for we pray in the name of Yeshua. Amen. 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 Okay, let me, let me get off here. Let's see. Okay. Done. Hi, honey. <laughs> yes, maybe I had it off. Maybe y'all are on. But I don't know. I don't see where it doesn't say that you've been off, but thank you for being quiet. Um, let me look in the chat box. I, I love this. Nali says, oh, you're welcome. And uh, yes, some people believe that the Lashon Kodesh is uh, the Hebrew tongue that will be speaking it. Uh, I had a rabbi cousin, he's no longer on earth, but it says in Zechariah will be speaking one common language and some people mm -hmm. that's Hebrew. And uh, so, and I like Hebrew. Uh, there's, it's, I have a Bible here that's Hebrew English. It's great. Bible Society sells it on their website. And Pimsler also has conversational Hebrew CDs you can put in your uh, iPhone if you're disciplined to learn. So, um, anyone want to share about anything? Uh, this is Alicia. Can you hear me? I sure can. Oh, first, I, I want to thank you because I read your book, uh, The Names of God. I love them. Uh, and I, I really uh, try to make sure I use them around my kids. But you were talking about, well, you know, what, thinking about going to heaven. People say, where are you going? I say, I'm going to heaven. Come on and go with me, you know. <laughs> and also the thought that, um, praise God, we'll see not only those that gave their lives to God, but those that lost their lives for him. And um, I think about the children aborted in that. Uh, I think somebody had a song saying, um, let's have the playground. So I think about that beautifully. And um, and I tell people, when you know, like when I'm around people, I try, I literally, I, the way you speak, I love it, your disposition uh, with the, the knowledge that you have. Okay, and being humble. So, but very quickly, uh, I just thank God for uh, what you're doing and how you're helping us. Again, I give all glory to the mm -hmm. Lord. Right when I got saved in January in 1980, uh, I read Isaiah 53, 6 over lunch. All of us like sheep have gone astray. Each has turned to his own way. Own oh, way. Um, is causing the iniquity of us all to fall on him. That verse changed my life. And I had a friend who gave me a little pamphlet by InterVarsity Press called Seven Minutes with God. Mm. And 30 seconds reading, uh, praying, God opened my mind. Four and a half minutes reading the Bible and two and a half minutes talking to God about what you read. And I, I soon very quickly realized that seven minutes wasn't enough and God captured me. And that, if he does it with me, he does it with anyone because this is like an alive book. So I give glory to him mm -hmm. in that habit today. Amen. 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 You know, but thank you. Thank you. There's my husband. I'm so glad to see him. Lynn, do you want to, anyone want to say anything? And let me see. Okay. Hi, um, Barry. This is Kim. I, Kim. I haven't been on Zoom with you since a minute now. I got a new email that I'm going to send it to you so you can Okay. Uh, yes, I wonder you, what happened. Your Zoom Bible classes. Yes. I, I, I um, left Coca-Cola, so you have Coca-Cola. I retired from there, and so I, you had that email. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah, because it came I haven't out. heard from you. Yeah, I want to come back. want to come back. So glad. It's good to see your beautiful face. Oh, it's great to see good you. Good to see you. I thought, <laughs> why isn't she at Coca-Cola anymore? Because your email came back. Oh, okay. and, uh, yeah and you know any calls all i can just put you on that i haven't done any teaching since um i think early spring but i'm going to be doing some other stuff coming up and uh okay uh, and then thank you and then let's you're welcome see. somebody said have you been to tel aviv did you go since recently uh, i've canceled i hate to say this i've postponed five trips okay. not because of the want to 
but because <laughs> I had to, because okay. of the virus. And I even had to postpone a July trip, which has been pushed down back to August 5th. Um, and the group is going the end of September. Um, and the benchmarks are extremely difficult right now uh, regarding getting in, giving proof of vaccination. Mm -hmm. You've got to show that you've got medical insurance if you get sick there in Israel. You've got to sign another declaration. Uh, and then once you... And then you've got to get the three-day test before you go to Israel. Then you are tested once you land there. And if you had COVID, didn't have the vaccine, you have to get a letter from your doctor to show that you've got the antibody. So it's like, oi, I mean, wow. it's so much stuff. <laughs> yeah, but they want to be careful. Yes. Uh, uh, I don't know, blame them. So um, mm -hmm. I think Joan and so, but God has his timing. And yes. still... I'm going to put the website on here, um, Sar Shalom Israel, and then I'm going to, um, Sar Shalom Israel org is our website, and then the calendars is a Sar Shalom Israel at gmail.com. Let me just put these up here. The calendars, um, um, there's two different kinds, and if you email me, I mean, I think I can screenshot them let me see if i can um uh the um the calendars are either in the illustrated i don't know if i'm sharing right now let me just uh, uh let me see if i can minimize this to do this okay no i can't um uh let me go here i think i can do it through here and then the desktop calendars are 24 dollars with postage if there's like a group order you know, I, I, we can handle that. Let me um, get in here and the, just see if I can send you the, um, or show you the, the beautiful, they really are the calendars. Um, oh, I hear one of the cats in, <clears throat> you know, it's funny when you hear a mysterious sound and you've got cats, you know that. You know they're in the no good. <laughs> it's like we want attention. Okay, let me see if I can uh, just go through here real quickly. Uh, but the calendars are unbelievable. Let me see if this is one. Yay. Okay. Um, okay. And then let me um, screenshot. Uh, uh, come over here. Share screen. Okay. The, can you see them? This is time and a season. So the contents from Ecclesiastes, and these are pictures from Israel. Okay. And then not only do they have this, there's, um, let me see if I can, uh, okay, screen sharing is stopped. And then let me show you the illustration for, um, nope, that's the wrong thing. Uh, <laughs> Ms. Larry, okay. I have them if you want me to share. Okay, that would be great, Susanna. Thank you. Susanna is our techie guru, big guru, techie expert, everything <laughs> at the congregation. And uh, are you able to screenshot? You think you can share screen? Great. Or do I need to make you an administrator? Oh, yeah, you need to, yeah, you need to allow me to, to share. Okay, let me... Um, Okay, well, okay, multiple participants, now try. Does it let you, it says multiple, part there you go. Yes. Okay. okay, so it's got the Moedim, the Lord's appointed times, the uh, different uh, Hebrew, check out this, it's uh, the Hebrew alphabet. There's the calendar and you'll see the Moedim, the holidays in um, orange. And then there's Psalms, which is the illustrated uh, ones. And then there are also the time and a season, Ecclesiastes. And there's also prayers. I might not have forwarded that on, but there are like some of the liturgy, the um, uh, ironic blessing. So you can email me. They're $24. You can go to the website and do PayPal. Uh, I will know that it's you because I pretty much have already 
sent out the notice um, and um, if things come in today and I don't know you, uh, I'll email you. There might not be a place on PayPal to uh, say which calendar, but I love these calendars. We have them every year with a charity. Um, I just love it. And uh, I mean, you know, it's in English. It's got the, uh, the Torah reading and there's also New Testament reading. And so it's got the 66, the 66 books there. And um, it's, it's, it's my favorite. And then, hey, right here, learning Hebrew. Hello. Um, even has the cursive. Jeff is great at cursive. I like block. Okay, I'm like the elementary student and he's like, you know, the college student with Hebrew, he does the cursive well, so um, we fit together. <laughs> so um, let's see, here's another chat thing. Let's see. Okay, that was Veronica. Um, other questions or, and uh, um, I'm just, it's like really cool when I look at some of the, because it's like several nationalities on here and I love Heinz 57 sauce. So here we have Heinz 57, either countries or nationalities. It's kind of, it's just so beautiful. And uh, so anybody else? I don't know if Lynn's still on here. Honey, you want to say anything? We have a lot of people from Jamaica in our congregation. So that was uh quite appropriate when you talked about that. Well, honey, Jeff, do you want to add a, a little thing about that? Because you really are the, uh, you know, you're the one that's got the brilliance of uh, crypto Jews, Spanish influence. Well, thank you, honey. But the hour, the hour belongs to you. <laughs> well, he really, you can contact him or contact me and I can pass that information along. But he uh, has spoken. We were going to go to Spain a few years ago um, to take a walk through some of the old synagogues. My favorite thing is that EZ, like Jimenez, Lopez. Uh, there's so many, the Sephardic uh, Jewry da Roots. How many did you say? How many millions of Spanish people could have Jewish heritage, honey? Well, Benjamin Netanyahu's father, a professor and historian, argued that uh, if tested uh, for DNA purposes, if you look at the Caribbean, if you look at Central and South America, over 30 million people, uh, there's the religion of Israel, but then the Zara Israel, those descended from the seed of Israel. And there are a lot of people that have, you know, Hebrew genetic imprints um, unbeknownst to them because through time and circumstance, they didn't grow up with the, with, the, with the Hebrew religion, but nevertheless, they're descended from the Hebrew people. It's just so beautiful. I mean, it really- No, you're so beautiful. You're so beautiful. <laughs> so- One yeah. day, um, hi everyone. One day, um, Barry and Jeff, maybe you guys could do something on relationships. Oh, we'd love to. Um, yes. I, I always observe and, and um, I'm very impressed with the relationship that you guys portray. And I know that there are um, females, not just in our congregation at Beth Adonai, but you know, overall who have reached a certain age and may or may not think that they can find love again. So just that interaction, that little interaction that you, that you guys just had was really, really nice. And maybe it's something that you could consider doing as well. Well, um, I was 62. I knew Jeff many years ago, wasn't interested in him back then. And again, I was raw, you know, I was a brand new believer, just had begun on the MBA and Jeff went on and got married for 30. He was married for 30 years, had two wonderful kids. He's grandpa, uh, Lava, Zara, his granddaughter. Um, and after Patty died, before she died, she told him to marry me. Uh, they were on a cruise. Uh, the end of her life and one thing led to another and um, you know I'm just so thankful at 62 that uh, we can have life together and no one's guaranteed tomorrow so I just like we both like to celebrate every day it's been hard because he's been gone a month he was all ready to come back 
Thursday, last Thursday, and then, you know, somebody around him uh, got COVID and he was quarantined till this coming week, maybe Thursday, but we celebrate every day. But just a side note, to really encourage anyone that's over 62 is that coming back from our trip to um, Zimbabwe, uh, Jeff and I were at the exit row and the lady sitting next to me had an aunt that was 96, 96 or 92, that married a man in her 70s. She had never been married before. And actually the 92 year old aunt looked younger than the 70 something man. So there's hope, there's, there's always hope. You know, draw, to, draw close to Jesus, draw close to Yeshua, and then we'll see what happens. But we've been encouraged to, because Jack Hayford married us, and that was one of his exhortations to share your story. Maybe after he gets out of Cambridge, we'll expound on that. But thank you. And just tell me the right way to say, is it Nali? Nali? Yes, Nali. Okay, good. Yeah, and just as an FYI, my great-grandmother and also my husband's great-grandfather, they both um, fled Portugal uh, to, and they, are, they, they were practicing the Jewish religion and they, they consider themselves Jews. We've never done any DNAs or anything. And um, his mom, who is staying with us now, she talks about her dad and his Jewish roots. So I've been encouraging her to come to the synagogue. So what you said about um, the islands and especially in Jamaica, I can testify to that. Yes, yeah. It's a uh, uh, deep heritage, great history. Um, and it's a history that had been wiped out, but now is coming. There's um, some great stuff, Roy Garcia, Rabbi Roy in San Antonio uh, also, but really Jeff has dug deeply. He has dove, dived deeply into that subject and has spoken on it. I don't know, certain places where he's spoken have archives. He spoke, I think three years ago at Celebration for Paul Wilbur and he spoke on that uh, it, regarding Jacksonville and then the uh, migration of the Spanish up there, but with its origins in there. So, and pirates were merchants, you know, mercenaries, they were merchants. So when we hear the pirates of the Caribbean, it could be Spanish Jews. It's very interesting. Anything, okay, here's a little thingy in the chat. Anyway, um, the Lord is good. I don't know, Lynn, do you wanna say anything before? And I'll just close with the ironic blessing in Hebrew. What about um, the organizations that Sar Shalom Israel supports? Oh my goodness! Okay, that's that's what we're okay. kind of want to hear about because okay. we want to know what the needs are. Yes. Okay. And you can go over if it's okay with you. Sure. Big time. We have since we can't go. We have been shipping. And not only from our location, people ship from other uh, cities in the country uh, directly to Tennessee, and they ship them on a container to Israel. And um, many people we help, uh, like just recently somebody had contacted uh, the ministerial organization of which I came in under with Jeff, he's been ordained. <laughs> Um, they had computers and I just said, well, I'll take one and little hearts preschool is getting that one. They said they've been praying for months. And then, you know, we said, we've got one for you brand new, um, little hearts preschool. Uh, but we really are going to the down and outers, like the unborn, as far as I'm concerned, one of the most sacred works that is being done in Israel is, um, uh, with uh, Beyond Chaim, uh, the unborn pro-life. She is saving babies, Israel babies. If the mommy keeps a baby, and I know Lynn, this is one of your, your pet ministries too, but blankets, baby blankets, onesies, we prefer uh, 
you know, infant toddler clothing rather than shoes because shoes is heavier. Um, but again, we have gotten UPS has been very gracious to us with our shipping rates. And so sometimes people will send them to us or Lynn has, has even uh, had boxes picked up or taken boxes over to UPS. You don't even have to do that. You can do it from your home and you can just contact me. I can give you the account number and, and they can be sent uh, to Tennessee, which is the entity that, that then, then goes on and ships them overseas. Um, so the baby things. And then another ministry that is very, two of them that are connected is one because of the mafia in Tel Aviv, the Russian mafia. And I didn't even know this until about a year and a half. Ago. But um, there is a gentleman, Dove, it was a rehab in Beersheba, but he was a beach bum years, decades ago in um, Elad and stated about radically saved. He's a Russian Jew, hippie, druggy, you name it. And God cleaned him up. He's began in Beersheba, but he has a superstition in Tel Aviv and a canteen uh, around the country. Will volunteer like he has a, a a day, a lunch, and then an evening. And when we see him, we go during the day, not at night. I, I just won't put anybody in a place of either danger or I just want to uh oh my phone it sounds like I'm to mute y'all. Um but uh we go and we serve maybe I should mute it. Um but uh we go and work at the canteen. And some of us go where the prostitutes are and give a gift bag. But in every gift bag, they get a coin. Either they get the Russian coin. I might not have the coin here in Russian. But we've got Arabic gospel coins, Hebrew gospel coins. And um, we've got Russian coins that they get in their bag. So we don't want to give anything like when we go see the IDF soldiers, we give them a gift bag that's got a black t-shirt, socks, a flannel blanket from Walmart, something else, but they are handed a gospel coin. Nobody knows that we're Sarshalom Israel there. They just know that we're women and men that go and give them a, a gift, but we give them a gospel coin as well. Uh, so even with the prostitutes in Tel Aviv, I didn't even know there are three kinds of prostitutes there. There are the high call girls. We don't see them. We see the middle road uh, prostitutes, the ones that are in the rooms, like in Amsterdam, you'll go to those windows and see the window girls, window ladies. They've got them in Tel Aviv. And so we are guided through there and give them a gift with nice socks and some toiletries. And then, um, then also the drug addicts. That is for somebody uh, who can handle people shooting up. And I and and if you don't want that, you can go where the prostitutes are. And then the drug addict prostitutes are there too. But that's really for somebody that can handle the hardcore. It's very graphic. Um, and if you don't want to do any of that, you can just stay in the canteen because we also. Uh, share as best we can. They've got Russian Christian videos going on. So we like to only support those in Israel uh, that are really proclaiming Yeshua. And then uh, we work with an entity right out of, outside of Tel Aviv who works with the survivors there. Uh, we'll bring them lap quilts, which also serve as incubator covers, 26 by 36 approximately. Lynn knows the exact size. Um, and right. then we've, uh, the hospitals have welcomed us. They said, as long as you have the vaccine, bring all the stuffed animals. Cause we've been shipping stuffed animals to Tennessee to ship over. Um, and then, um, a lady outside of Tel Aviv has accepted them and then has just, uh, will take them to Audrey at the hospital in Jerusalem. So the Lord has really, so it's like from young to old, 
uh, you know, I can give you more of a specific list, but we're really aiming to work smarter, which shipping is so much cheaper. I sent 200 stuffed animals and it cost me maybe $40, $40 to get them to Tennessee. So, um, uh, and it eases us up because what we'll take on the plane are the things for the IDF soldiers and for the uh, street ministry folks in Tel Aviv. And there's also another ministry there that gives um, uh, pedicures and manicures to some other prostitutes. And they are strong believers. They also have a pro-life uh, ministry in Tel Aviv. So we're also connecting with a Muslim ministry, maybe up in Nazareth, but hopefully in, in Jerusalem to see how we can, um, you know, serve the Muslim believing community. So does that help Lynn? Yeah. Um, the stuffed animals, if you would like to, we're making a list of things, uh, for the different organizations that we support. So, um, so that the women can give as they are led. Now the stuffed animals, I know they have to be new. Yes. Um, and um, we have the lap quilts and the baby quilts covered. Um, I say this about the stuffed animals. Yeah. Some of them, if they're gently used and they've been washed, we've got other, uh, uh, another ministry in Tel Aviv will be happy to take them. Okay. We prefer new and we need new only for the hospitals. All right. All right. And I say uh -huh. that because in 2008, when Mount Perrin had me be the team leader for their mission trip, and we worked at Joseph Warehouse, not Joseph Project, and we were going through their boxes and boxes of shipments, and they were so dusty. I thought there is no way we could ever give these to the hospitals, and the hospitals only insist they have to be pristine because every child that gets out of surgery gets a toy. Oh, yeah. And then um, what I've been doing for the drug addicts is um, I know you have a need for um, Neosporin and gauze and tape. When I go to the grocery store, I'll buy it, uh, you know, when I'm buying my groceries or um, this is uh, Costco has Neosporin and CVS and Walgreens has their own brand. And I have a suitcase over at the office that I put that stuff in because we can't ship it. Uh, uh, so um, I have a suitcase dedicated to that kind of stuff. Thank you. Um, and I've also gone in um, uh, Dollar Tree and gotten nail polish and a uh, base coat for the prostitutes as well. And I have it in that suitcase. Um, cool. The, you mentioned socks, what kind of socks? Um, the no-show footlets or? Yes, that's what we give. You know, they're like maybe $2 at Walmart. Yeah. And, um, uh, there, that's all that we, we put that with a little fleece, $2.50 Walmart blanket. Uh, a bag of toiletries. And what we do sometimes is, is rather than do the um, uh, toiletries and all the organization putting the bags together at home, we just do it on the bus, you know, which is a lot of fun. The last group that I've taken to Israel was in 2019, November, and they were all from Asia. And that we didn't need an interpreter, but we had so much fun even, you know, uniting in that. So you know, um, and they the do other thing is uh, uh, brace, bracelets. You put bracelets in there, yeah, right? Uh, yes. Jewelry, just real inexpensive yeah. bracelets yeah. for the girls. Yes, yes. And um, now, if you want to ship something, bring it to me because um, there's a specific box size and a specific mailing label and all that stuff that I know to do through Barry that. And it's amazing because the boxes are from Home Depot. I think they're 12 by 12 by 16, $14.67. And we wow. stuff the boxes and we use the um, vacuum pack, vacuum seal bags that I get from Dollar Tree for a dollar. 
And so that, that as well. Um, it's really great. And I thank you so much. I mean, none of this is done by one person. It's everybody, everybody's important. When you go over to Israel, uh, they just can't believe it. It's like you're Santa Claus, but it's always an opportunity to say, you know, Baruch Hashem, blessed is the name. And so, uh, so it's again, you know, thank you. Thank you, Lynn. And yeah. all. Well, the, I, and the other thing is um, those little coins. I have some of the coins that I want to put in the toiletry kits. I have this couple that travels a lot and they bring me their toiletry kit, kits from the airlines and the cruises and they're back to traveling again. Yeah. And I'm going to stick them in there. See, so um, anyway, those are uh, some ideas. Yes. Yeah, um, because people have sent toiletries over these past two years, uh, you donated a red suitcase to yeah. the show. I just have it. And that one is full with 50 pounds of those little bottles. So, I mean, little is much when God is in it, especially when it goes to Israel. And so we don't say no to anything. Um We've had handmade quilts, lab quilts, baby things. Um, there's a little place there in uh, Stephenville, Texas, that they're making uh, lab quilts again. God taps them on the shoulder. We just try to let people know we have a home for them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'd be happy to show you ladies around the office, our, our uh, factory over there <laughs> that Barbara and I work on. It's a lot of fun. Um, I do have that three minute video if you want. Oh, that'd be good. Okay. That'd be good because it really, th that's the other half. One half is making the stuff, but the other half is distributing. It's just, it's, it's a lot of fun. You're it's, a lot of fun. it's just a, like a synopsis. Um, cause people will sit for three minutes. They won't sit for 30 minutes. Well, we would sit for 30 minutes for you. We already have. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. And it's fun that Jeff is in there. Let me just uh, stop this. Um, okay. I'm going to kind of just, and it says 2020. Not on the screen yet.
I just shared that because God always allows us to do extra things. There was one young boy that went 13. He had a bar mitzvah at the well, second hearty steps. hearty shalom to you, Uh-oh, Jeffrey Seif here. Thank you for being I don't want, out oh, just a second. there. We <laughs> just are second. going in here. Enough of Jeffrey Seif. <laughs> okay. Um, so anyway, whether it's a bar mitzvah, we did Temple Mount Sifting Project there our opportunities to do service to Israel that are kind of neat too. So, you know, there's ministry stuff, but then there's always extras. The first time I went um, and we met with the Holocaust survivors, they spoke in uh, every language except English. And all I could do was just go around and rub their shoulders. They were sitting and it just, just had to do something. To, just to reach out to them. And that uh, touching is a universal language, of course. And um, I don't know if you've noticed the uh, clowns in the picture in the hospital with the red striped hats, the clowns, they are, they are um, therapists that go around that are nurses. They're trained um, to cheer up the children. Those, they're paid hospital staff and they're fabulous. And the soldiers, I remember um, we went to one area. Uh, it's a huge intersection. I think it's in Gush Etzion. There's like yes. four, uh, four or five lanes coming into a circle, uh, a circle uh, travel thing with, or maybe it had uh, stoplights. Roundabout. Roundabout, yeah. And there are, uh, soldiers, idea of soldiers at each corner, as well as one up uh, in a tower. And when we went around and we gave them the bags, they were grinning. From, of course, we were too, but they were grinning from ear to ear. They, they just can't believe it, you know. And I remember seeing Frances, whom maybe a couple of you know, she ran sprinted over and up that tower to give the guy the idf soldiers up in the tower a bag a gift bag and they're like the backpacks and we put stuff in there as barry said so it really it's just fun it's just fun and of course if we ask if we're in the hospitals do you want to can we pray for you and if they say yes we do or and then if they don't well we pray silently to ourselves for them and um i have not been in the the red carpet center the, for the prostitutes or the drug addicts um but god willing someday i will uh it, it's still my heart goes out to them and um anyway that's just a few examples of what i've done over there and Lord there's a whole lot more. We'll be yeah. there again. And uh, um, just like in that, as you know, I opened with Psalm 137, verse 1 by the rivers of Babylon in captivity, we wept. How can you expect us to sing a song when we're not in Jerusalem? And, um, and so some will never go. The new Jerusalem will be the next destination. And that's fine. Right. That's really the more, the more glorious place. So I'm just thankful for everybody's attention and being on here. And what this is just so encouraging, especially on Tisha B'Av, because even though it's a sad day, um, you know, God is with us in our suffering and our pain. And, and he never wastes time when he puts us in a place of affliction and that we look at Jerusalem now and we look at Israel now, how it's flourishing and uh, that through the pain of World War II, 1948 came about and now we see it now and she needs our prayers. But, um, you know, more than that, uh, you know, she needs Messiah and our families need Messiah too. So, Lynn, why don't you close in prayer? How's that? All right. Okay. And then I'll close with the ironic blessing. Thank you. Okay. Oh, Father God, thank you for this time, this precious time that all of us could come together and hear about 
your people in your land that you designated in Genesis 12. Mm -hmm. You've designated the borders and the people and you created the nation right there. Thank you that we have an opportunity to bless them. And in so doing, we are blessing you. And we, it, it is a blessing to us to be able to do this. Mm -hmm. Help us be laser focused on what we can do as a sisterhood in Beth Adonai, where you would like us to um, focus our energy, our time, our talents, and our treasures. And we pray for Barry and Sar Shalom Israel as they are our arms and legs, our feet, our hands and feet that minister directly. Guide them to the people that they you want them to see. And Father God, we pray that you would um, soften the hearts of the people to receive them, to receive them, and to receive you. In Yeshua's name I pray. Amen. Amen. Ya er adana panavelecha, vichunecha, Yesa adana panavelecha, Vizamlecha shalom. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord lift up the face of his countenance upon you and give you grace. And may the Lord lift up the face of his countenance upon you and give you peace. B'Shem Yeshua HaMashiach, Seha Elohim, in the name of Jesus the Messiah, the Lamb of God. Amen. Amen. And Todah Rabbah, y'all. Thank you. To be you. continued. Amen. Amen. See you. Bye, Barry. Bye, Barry. Blessings. Love you all. Shalom. 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 Shalom.